Scarlet and Violet base set is cool, but I'm really excited for Paldea Evolved. This is where we're really going to see a number of cards that really change the metagame of the Pokemon trading card game. And I'm so excited to finally get my hands on these cards and see where the game goes from there. I'm Jet from InThirdPerson.com. Make sure to like the video, subscribe to the channel. And today we are going to do a preview of Paldea Evolve. This is not going to be a comprehensive look at every single card in the set, uh, but I am going to flag some of the most noteworthy cards, in my opinion, and where possible, I'll also show some deck lists. Now, first off, shout outs to Justin Basil, the absolute goat. You absolutely should go to Justin Basil for amazing advice on how to play the Pokemon trading card game, uh, what deck archetypes are out there, and I'm using the site for proxies. So most of these cards have not been shown in English yet, uh, but he, ha they have gone through the work and have made proxies for use here. Uh, not just for me, but for the community as a whole. So thank you, Justin Basil, for that. Um, in terms of deck lists, I have pulled from, I think it's Pokeka Book or Pokeka Recipe. Uh, either of the, both of those are amazing Twitter accounts. If you want to see competitive deck lists that are performing well out of Japan, make sure to check those out on Twitter. Again, I'm using these one because these are decks that are doing well in Japan. Two, um, these don't exist in English yet. So I know in some videos where I've shown Japanese decks and people have been like, where's the English? I can't see it. Um, th it's because these cards don't exist in English yet. And I'm just using these to talk about these at a high level. At some point, I may do like more comprehensive deck previews, like for example, this Chen Pao one, and I'll put labels on and, and deck lists in the description. But we're just going to be talking about these at a high level. So uh, th there's our preface for what we're going to do. And let's talk about some of the, the most noteworthy cards here. And I think we have to start with the supporter card. I, Yon, I call her Yono. Uh, I think it's a silent I, but a lot of people also say Iono. Um, this is an absolutely massive card, which says each player shuffles their hand and puts it to the bottom of their deck. Then each player draws a card for each of their remaining prize cards. So it's kind of like a mix of Marnie, where you, each player shuffles their hand, puts it at the bottom of their deck, and then N, where each player draws a card for each of their remaining prize cards. And what makes this card so incredible is that it is an amazing comeback card that you can play at pretty much any time in the game, but especially if you're down big. If your opponent has one prize left, you can force them to shuffle that hand, put it to the bottom of their deck, and then force them to draw just one card while you draw however many that you want. So at pretty much at any point, if you are behind on prizes, you can play Yono, force your opponent to get rid of their cards and put them at the bottom of their deck and then draw X number of new ones that are going to be less than yours. Now you can play this while you're ahead on prizes. However, you are giving them more, more cards, but the, the hand disruption still might make it worth it. So there are some really interesting tactical choices to make when you play Yono from your hand. And I foresee this being in every single deck going forward, multiple copies in every deck. And yeah, if you're looking to get these IRL, um, you're definitely going to want a play set of these. I'm, I can't say for certain, but I am pretty sure that if you're playing PTCG live, you're probably going to get a four of in, in these. So you're not going to have to spend any credits. Knock on wood. Yep. Yep. Again, specu speculation on my part. Um, and also the, the special illustration rare is going to be worth a billion dollars. So good luck for anyone trying to pull that. I will definitely be using my credits in live to get the, the special illustration rare of Yono. Cause this is going to be a card that is in every deck going forward. Reversal energy is nuts. This is a card that counts for three energy of any type as long as you're behind on prizes. Okay, so there's a little more than that. You have to be behind on prizes. This has to be attached to an evolution Pokemon, and this can't be a Pokemon with a rule box. However, there are so many evolution Pokemon that are single prizers that just haven't been worth it to play. 
and now they become come playable or even become great off the top of my head um guard of war i mean guard of war is already good in the guard of war deck the one with shining arcana but you can just attach one reversal energy and completely cover the three energy cost on guard of war in scarlet and violet base set wug trio you just play one reversal energy and it covers the three energy cost for that there is a new card in paldea evolved this lux ray where you don't even have to be playing an electric deck to use this card where it's got the vibrant flash ability where once during your turn if this pokemon's in your hand and you have more prize rem cards remaining than your opponent you play this you can play this pokemon on your bench so you can just bench a stage two pokemon out of nowhere with this lux ray attach a reversal energy and it counts for the lightning and the two colorless and you just get a single prizer that does 180 damage there are so many possibilities that open up the game with reversal energy that i am excited to see how it changes the game up squawkabilly ex is going to be our new crobat slash our new more accurately our new dedene gx thanks to its show off ability once during your turn you may discard your hand and draw six cards you can't use more than one show off each turn and oh oh squawkabilly ex is our new crobat v and more to be more accurate it is our new dedene gx with its show off ability once during your first turn you may discard your hand and draw six cards you can't use more than one show off each turn so on the first turn of the game you, you've got a bad hand you just use the squawk ability squawk ability ability just dump your hand get a fresh set of cards i think this is an amazing card it's definitely not as uh, powerful as something like a dedene gx or even a crobat v uh, because you can only use it on your first turn but i think for overall balance of the game this is fine and this is going to be a one of in pretty much every deck going forward because getting a good starting hand is so important and if you've just got crap cards you can use squawkabilly ex flush them down the toilet get yourself a fresh set of cards and that can be the difference between a game that's an instant loss to a game that you can actually play or even win Moving on to some of the big deck archetypes, and one of the ones that I think is going to make a big splash is Chen Pao EX, 220 HP, water type Pokemon to retreat. It's got the incredible ability Trembling Frost. Once during your turn, if this Pokemon is in the active spot, you may search your deck for up to two basic water energy cards, reveal them and put them into your hand, then shuffle your deck. Now, it's got the attack Hail Blade where it does 60 damage and you discard any number of water energy from your Pokemon. This attack does 60 damage for each card you discarded this way. Now, the thing is, you can combo Chen Pao, like moving Chen Pao in and out of the active to grab even more water energy. And then using the new Bax Caliber card, you can use its absolute zero ability where as often as you like during your turn, you may attach basic water energy cards from your hand to one of your Pokemon. This is even better than Frostmoth in the Sword and Shield era in the sense that you can attach water energy to any Pokemon and you can do it either in the active or the bench, which is absolutely nuts. If you combo it with the Chen Pao, you can put yourself in position to pretty much one shot anything in the game. Um, let me go and show you a example deck list from Japan that did very well here. Again, I'm not going to do a full preview of how this deck works, but let's talk about it at a high level. Uh, Chen Pao gets you a whole bunch of energy. Palkia can be used as a, a strong attacker in the early game. Also with its um, star portal ability, letting you accelerate a whole bunch of energy from the discard pile. You can use Baxcalibur to accelerate from your hand to your Pokemon of your choice. There's this Kyogre card that I think is in Crown Zenith that does a whole bunch. It's a really strong single prize attacker and combined with Baxcalibur, you can charge up that four energy attack no problem. We've also got Super Energy Retrieval in here, which is a returning card in the set as well as Super Rod. We'll get to those in a sec. 
And Skater's Park, which is a really cool addition here. This is a card from an older set, and this lets Chen Pao pretty much retreat for, for free. You're just going to put the energy back into your hand instead of the discard pile, and then you can go into another Chen Pao, grab two more energy from the deck. Now you've got four energy in hand and can attach it however you want. Um, this is the, again, I don't know if this is the definitive way to play Chen Pao going forward, but this looks really cool and something to use as a reference point going forward. Another major deck archetype to come out of Paldea Evolved is Ting Lu EX. Its move land scoop does 150 damage and you put two damage counters on one of your opponent's bench Pokemon. That doesn't necessarily sound too strong. However, its Earthen Crush ability. As long as this Pokemon is in the active spot, your opponent's Pokemon that have any damage counters on them have no abilities except for Pokemon EX. So that, that part kind of sucks, but being able to shut off single prize Pokemon and Pokemon V with their abilities is absolutely nuts. Imagine just using a... Um, oh, the the Halucha from Scarlet Violet base set, plopping it down on your bench and then dropping a damage counter on two Genesex. And now those two Genesex just don't work as long as Ting Lu EX is in the active spot. And there are so many decks that can be crippled by Ting Lu EX's ability that you can pretty much just win the War of Attrition by shutting off their abilities. Here is an example deck list from Japan. Again, we're using Ting Lu as our primary attacker. We've got Koridon to accelerate energy, particularly in the early game. Uh, we've got the Halucha for getting that initial damage on to shut off abilities. And I actually don't know what the Spiritomb is. I probably should look that up. But for the time being, that's the we'll talk about these three cards. That's the general concept. And then we use Alakazam here to move the damage around in case they, they bench something new or you want to move that damage to something else that you want to shut off and that is the general idea of this deck it's going to be super annoying to play against however um i can see this being a very popular deck because of its ability to shut down other decks in a unique way Okay, since we we talked about it in the the previous bit, I'm editing this in. We talked about this spirit tomb. What the heck does this do? Uh, I just pulled it up here again. Thank you to Justin Basil for the translations. Uh, this has a crazy ability, Pitch Black Disaster. As long as this Pokemon is in play, basic Pokemon V uh, in play have no abilities. So again, just doubly shutting off abilities with Ting Lu and with the Spiritomb, just trying to shut down your opponents from playing the game. Um, I, I'm going to hate fighting against this. I don't even know if I'm going to like playing it, but I do like the fact that this is an option for players to explore. Foratris EX gives players a really interesting way to accelerate energy. Its explosive energy ability says, once during your turn, you may search your deck for up to five basic grass energy cards and attach them to your Pokemon in any way you like. Then shuffle your deck. If you searched your deck in this way, this Pokemon is knocked out. So it's a stage one Pokemon. It's an EX. You're going to have to lose two prizes to use it. However, you can accelerate five basic grass energy to your board. There are a ton of possibilities and not just for grass decks. I'm actually going to pull up one right here where Reggie Drago becomes an interesting target for this where you can you, you cough up two prizes, but you get to charge up either charge up two Reggie Drago straight up or give yourself a ton of grass energy on the board so that you can use Giratina's Lost Impact on multiple turns. And you may notice there's an extra card here. I normally don't play, I don't normally play the Garchomp. Um, I do play the Gudra, the Giratina, and the Duraludon in my Reggie Drago deck, but there's also a Noivern EX, which we're gonna talk about right here. Um, this one has the move Covert Flight during your opponent's next turn, prevent all damage done to this Pokemon by a pack attacks from basic Pokemon. Reggie Drago can copy that. And I mean, if you're playing a Noivern deck, yeah, this is kind of cool. Again, single prize decks like Lost Box, for example, especially like the Sky Seal Soul builds, you can just not get, get hit by them, which is nuts. 
and even dominate Echo. During your opponent's next turn, they can't play any special energy or stadium cards from their hand. So if you're playing a Noivern EX deck, you've got some interesting control options here. If you're playing a Reggie Drago deck like this, you've got even more control over the battle than you already had before. Let's take a moment to talk about the first partner Pokemon in Scarlet and Violet. They're all getting EXs. Well, the, the final evolution of them. I think they're not going to be as impactful as Ting Lu and Chen Pao, but I do want to take a moment to cover them here because they're really popular Pokemon. Meowskarada EX, 310 HP, it's a stage 2, and it's got the ability Magic Bouquet. You must discard a Grass Energy card from your hand in order to use this ability. Once during your turn, you may choose one of your opponent's bench Pokemon and put three damage counters on it. And you want that damage down because it's got the move Nail Scratch for only two colorless energy, does 100 damage, and if your opponent's active Pokemon already has any damage counters on it, this attack does 120 more damage. So 220 damage, and you're if you potentially comboing it with Magic Bouquet, 250 damage is pretty good. Here's an example deck list, again, from Japan with the Meowskarada as your primary attacker. We've got Beebrill for drawing cards, and then we have an interesting inclusion here with the oh man metacham where you might be leaving some damage on the table um or yeah you might be leaving some damage on the table uh with meowskarada or you can use meowskarada to set it up also i should have mentioned here i'm silly uh if you've got multiple meowskaradas on the board you can do this move multiple times so you could be doing like 120 damage theoretically in one go but it combos really nicely with the metacham where you, you get some initial damage with meowskarada you come in with the metacham and double turbo energy or you maybe you accelerated with Arceus or something. Arceus is a really weird inclusion in this deck. Um, but you use Metacham's move that does 20 damage, and then you get to take another turn. So really interesting possibilities here. Kind of reminds me of Samurott V-Star in a way, and I love the Samurott V-Star deck. So curious to try this one out. Quaquavel E. X, the final evolution of Quaxley, 320 HP, not really going to use its lively Samba attack, but its propeller shot for two energy does a very efficient 230 HP or two dam 230 damage, and you put two energy from this Pokemon into your hand. That kind of sucks having to put it into your hand, but there are ways of accelerating that energy. Here's an example deck list from Japan. I think I pulled this before the release of um, like Triplet Bead and Snow Hazard and Clay Burst because there are some other ways to accelerate energy now too. Um, one of the ways this deck has acceleration is the Quaquavel here, the regular one. Uh, this lets you attach an energy. We've got Palkia, which has the its V-Star power, which lets you attach energy. Uh, but this could also be comboed with the Baxcalibur's Absolute Zero, where you do the propeller shot, puts the energy in her hand, and then on the following turn, Baxcalibur can just attach that energy right back, which makes it a very interesting combo going forward. Skeledurge EX has a whopping 340 HP. It is the final evolution of Fue Coco, and it has a crazy move, Burning Voice, which does 270 damage, and this attack does 10 less damage for each damage counter on this Pokemon. Yes, it's going to do less damage after it gets hit. However, if you bring it in at the right time, you could be taking one shots left and right in a way where it just feels like it doesn't even matter. Here's an example deck list out of Japan with the, the four Skeledurge in it. We've also got two Entei's as a potential early game attacker and just kind of an efficient attacker as well, being able to attack for only two energy and it's a basic as well. Um, we've also got some Cheryl's in here, presumably for the Skeledurge, where you would heal off whatever damage you have, um, attach an energy to the fresh Skeledurge, attach a second energy through Magma Basin, bring it back in, and, and do massive damage. Could be something like that. So, um, here's an example list from Japan. Again, I don't know if this is a definitive way to play Skeledurge going forward, and I'm not going to go break down every single card. If we get an opportunity to look at these decks in more detail, I definitely will. Uh, but for now, we'll just a high-level look. Mimikyu is the new 
Mill Tank. This one has the safeguard ability that lets you prevent all damage done to this Pokemon by attacks from your opponent's Pokemon EX and Pokemon V. This is going to be really annoying for a number of of deck archetypes and i think it's going to force players to have to respect it and have some single prize attackers or some sort of option to handle the mimic you because there will be games as we have seen with the mill tank you will win games just because you put a mimic you in the active and your opponent does not have an answer for it so um really annoying that it's here but for the overall balance of the game i do think it's nice that we have another one of these Artisan is a new stadium where once during each player's turn, that player may search their deck for a basic Pokemon that doesn't have a rule box and put it onto their bench. Then that player shuffles their deck. This is a really good early game stadium. I mean, both players are going to benefit, so you have to consider if you want your opponent to have that benefit as well. But being able to have an easy way of getting a basic Pokemon onto your bench is great. Charm of Courage is basically Cape of Toughness. The basic Pokemon this card is attached to gets plus 50 HP, and that is a lot of HP, and it does make a lot of basic Pokemon more tankier. For example, your Maridon EX right now is really squishy, but if you put this on there, it's going to be 270 HP, potentially doing like 280, 300 damage with all the Regilekis, and it could be even more of a beast than it already is. I think the big combo people are seeing right now, there's a Drifloon in Scarlet and Violet base set, and you put the Charm of Courage on there, and then the Gardevoir loads up a whole bunch of energy, and it becomes a single prize attacker that can one-shot anything in the game. It's absolutely nuts. So Charm of Courage is going to definitely see a lot of play going forward. Giacomo is not going to be in every deck, but I think this card is going to be in... You know, a number of decks. I think it's, the effect of it is so cool where you can discard a special energy from each of your opponent's Pokemon. If you're playing against Mew, if Mew VMAX and you, you just drop this, especially if you're playing against a DTE build, you could potentially force them to lose half or three quarters of their energy in one Giacomo, which is absolutely nuts. Grusha is one of my favorite um, gym leaders in Scarlet and Violet and in the Pokemon trading card game they get a an okay card you get to draw cards until you have five in your hand and if you have no energy cards attached to any of your Pokemon draw up to seven instead there are going to be archetypes where that you just don't have energy attached on the board that often or this is just a really good turn one draw option as well so this isn't going to be in every deck but certain decks are really going to appreciate the effect of this card super rod is making its triumphant return in this set just as a quick reminder of what it does it shuffles up to three in any combination of pokemon and basic energy cards from your discard pile into your deck this is pretty much an upgrade over ordinary rod which let you take uh one or up to two pokemon and up to two energy yeah you're only getting three things instead of four but if you need three pokemon or you need three energy um or or a combination in between you can do that with super rod and i think this is a card that we really need in the game right now because ordinary rod is gone and there are a lot of decks like a gardevoir and um like the don dozo like single prize decks that are really hurting because there isn't any item based recovery you have to play miriam which is yeah you get five pokemon back but it's it's a little slow because it's a supporter card and super rod is pretty much going to replace that going forward Superior Energy Retrieval is also returning as part of Paldea Evolved. You can only use this card if you discard two cards, but if you discard two cards, you can put four basic energy cards from your discard pile into your hand, and you can't choose a card you discarded with the effect of this card. So being able to get four energy back, we've already talked about a deck that can do this this combos incredibly well with the bax caliber you play the energy retrieval attach that four energy with bax caliber however you want and just pop off i might be biased but i think jet energy is really good as long as this card is attached to a pokemon it provides colorless energy and when you attach this card from your hand to one of your bench pokemon switch that pokemon with your active 
Pokemon. And this gives you some really interesting movement options. For example, Lost Box is going to love this, where you can attach this energy to a Comfey on the bench, move it into the active, do your flower selecting, and then discard that energy as a retreat, giving you an extra look at flower selecting but there are other deck archetypes that are going to benefit from this i already showed the skeledurge one that does there's also a new lugia archetype which i should have pulled up in this video uh that prominently uses jet energy and colorless pokemon and that is an archetype that is going to pop off in the next set once paldea evolved is out Luminous Energy is another incredibly strong energy, though its power level has been toned down from the likes of Rainbow Energy and Aurora Energy here, where this provides a energy of any type. However, if you attach any other special energy to that Pokemon, this just becomes colorless energy, which is an interesting way to balance this card where you can pretty much only have this as a special energy along with basic energies to cover the rest of the cost um i this could make for certain counter decks to to come back up like stuff that was running like suicune raiko and and entei as sort of counters to the meta um zapdos as well um and maybe this is the card that brings regigigas back i don't know if it, it's going to because they still have to run a bunch of basic energies but um, there are definitely some uses for luminous energy going forward a couple more cards that i personally think are intriguing copper raja ex stage one pokemon with a whopping 300 hp and it's got the move nosequake which does 260 damage and yeah, this, this does 30 damage to each of your bench Pokemon, but 260 damage is a huge number. And you can accelerate this with, with Lost Box. You can accelerate this with Magnezone. There are some interesting ways to get Copper Raja going, and I'm very excited to try this one. Annihilate EX is a card that is potentially not going to be in the main set. I've heard rumblings that this is going to be a promo card, but I do want to talk about it here because it has the cool move Angry Grudge where you can put up to 12 damage counters on this Pokemon and this attack does 20 damage for each damage counter you placed in this way. You are doing two upwards of 240 damage and yeah, you might get knocked out, but for one energy, 240 damage is a lot. Tinkaton EX is another one that might get moved to its own promo box. Again, this is just stuff I've heard um, at the time of this recording. I'm not sure if that's that's for sure, for sure. Uh, if it is, sure, there you go. If not, well, I apologize for you know spreading misinformation, but that's just what I heard at the time. Uh, stage 2 Pokemon, 300 HP, and its move Big Hammer for 2 colorless energy does 30 damage for each card in your hand. You're going to want to combo this with like the Rapid Strike Milotic that doesn't let you get um, your, your opponent disrupt your hand, and you're just trying to build a massive hand so you can get one shots with this Tinkaton EX. I don't necessarily think this is going to be good enough in competitive play, but I think players are going to try because Tinkaton is a very popular Pokemon and actually one of my favorites as well. Thus concludes our look at Paldea Evolved. Again, this is a preview. This isn't every single card in the set. These are just the ones that I really wanted to talk about that I think are going to make an impact on competitive play. And let me know in the comments, are you excited for this set? Are you horrified of, um, you know, some of the deck archetypes coming up like a Ting Lu, like a Chen Pao? Are you clamoring to try and pull that special illustration rare of Yono and sell it for a billion dollars? What, whatever the case is, let me know in the comments. All right, I got to get going. Thank you so much for watching. Before we go, you can find me on all the things, YouTube, TikTok, Twitter, and Instagram at In Third Person. You can find me on Twitch at In Third Person, where I stream the Pokemon trading card game every Sunday at 10 a.m. Eastern Time. And check out the website, InThirdPerson.com, for more articles and videos on video games, board games, and other nerdy pursuits. So until the next one, I will see you later. Bye-bye. <laughs>